All right, the next thing we're going to be doing is adding and subtracting rational expressions and completely simplifying it and getting to the final answer. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're gonna start off um, the problem just like we had done previously. So we've already practiced getting a common denominator and now we're just gonna do the entire problem from start to finish. So if we look at this problem, when I break down the denominator of the first, fraction, I get 2 times 2 times x times y times y. And if I look at the second fraction, then I just have 2. So my common denominator, if I put both of those pieces together, I'm going to need two twos. And that's because the left fraction had two of them, while the right fraction only had one. And then I'm going to need an x, and I'm going to need two y's. So all together, that is 4xy squared. So my common denominator is 4xy squared. So now if I consider this, my first um, fraction had two twos and x and two y's. Two twos and x and two y's. So the left fraction does not need to be fixed at all. The right fraction, however, only had one two. So if I look at it, it had one two. That means it needed the rest of this stuff. So it needs a two, an x, and then a y squared. So 2xy squared. 2xy squared. All right, so my first fraction gets to stay the same. And then my second fraction is this stuff over here. So on the top, that's going to be 2 times 2 is 4. So I did the 2 and I did the 2. And then I have the x right there. So I've got x. And then I have a y squared multiplied by a y, which is y to the third. And then on the bottom, I have 2 times 2 is 4, and then x, and then y squared. All right, so at this point, I'm ready to write this as one fraction. I know my common denominator is 4xy squared. On the top, I have 4y minus 4xy to the third. So now if you guys remember, anytime we have um, something in the numerator or denominator that has pluses or minuses in between, we put parentheses around it, that's considered to be one group. So if I want to see if it could simplify at all, then I have to factor whatever is inside of that group. So if I look at this, uh, the top of that can be factored using um, a GCF. So I have a GCF of four, and then I also have a GCF of Y because each of those two pieces has a four in it. It also has a Y in it. So I'm gonna take out the four, take out the Y. From the first piece, if I divide out four Y, then I just get one left over. From the second piece, if I divide out four Y, then I have an X left over and a Y squared. So that is from the top. And then here's the bottom, the four X Y squared. And now I'm going to cancel whatever I can see that's the same. I'm not going to get to touch those parentheses, the 1 minus x, y squared. I can't touch anything in there because that would only cancel out if there was another factor or another set of parentheses that was identical. So I don't get to touch that. But I do have the 4 in the front that can cancel. And I do have a y that can cancel with one of the y's down here. And then there will be one left over. So my final answer here should be... And you can do parentheses or not, it doesn't matter. I'll go ahead and put them. So one minus xy squared over, and my leftovers were xy, and that is it, I am finished. All right, here's the next example. Okay. So if we look at the denominators here, the first denominator should be in parentheses because it has a plus in between, so that is one group. If I want to factor that one group, then I have to do a GCF or diamond or whatever uh, factoring is applicable. And in this situation, it's going to be a GCF. So I'm taking out a GCF of 2x. My leftovers here would be 2x plus 1. And if you want to think of the 2x in the front as being like 2 times x, so those two are being multiplied, and then that is being multiplied by the set of parentheses. You can think of it that way. And then on the right set, we have 2 times x, which is 2 times x. So for this one, our common denominator, we're going to need a 2, because each of them had a 2. 
we're going to need an x because each of them had an x. And then this one needs the 2x plus 1 because it had a 2x plus 1. So our common denominator is going to be 2x times 2x plus 1. So if we look at the first fraction, the first fraction already has the 2x. It already has the 2x plus 1, so I don't have to do anything to that. If we look at the second fraction, it has the 2x. So here's the 2x that it has already, but it's missing the 2x plus 1. So we're going to go ahead and fix that. So 2x plus 1, 2x plus 1. Okay. So now I can go ahead and rewrite my first fraction. I'm going to say x minus 4. And then for the denominator, I'm going to go ahead and ignore this denominator. And I'm going to use this one. And the reason I'm going to use that one is because in the end, we're going to want our denominator in factored form so we can see if anything cancels. So it's actually going to be helpful to us later on. <laughs> there we go. It's going to be helpful to us later on to do that. Okay, so now I have to fix this fraction right here. So if I look at the top part, I have a 3x that's being multiplied by a 2x plus 1. So I need to take the 3x and distribute it. So 3x times 2x is 6x squared. 3x times 1 is 3x. And then on the bottom, I have a 2x being multiplied by a 2x plus 1. And again, I'm going to leave the bottom in factored form because I'm just going to smush those two fractions together. And that bottom won't have to change at all. So that's perfect the way it is. Okay, so for the bottom of the fraction, I'm going to go ahead and write, I already know it's 2x times 2x plus 1. I do have to simplify the top, however. So I'm going to go ahead and copy down that x minus 4 from the front. And then I have to make sure that I subtract each of these things. So I'm going to distribute that subtraction sign. All right, so now I need to simplify the top. So I'm going to combine like terms. I'm going to go ahead and leave the bottom the same. And I know that x squared term should go first. So I'm going to go ahead and write that one first. And then I have a plain old x, and I have a negative 3x, so that makes negative 2x. And then I've got negative 4. So now this is just a regular simplifying problem. So we want to see what we can do with the top. Again, since it's got addition and subtraction between, we should put parentheses around it. And hopefully the very first thing you're noticing is that there's a GCF of negative 2 in this problem. So I'm going to take out negative 2 on the top. And then I'll write what's left over. So that would be 3x squared plus 1x, or just plus x, and then plus 2. And then this is 2x times 2x plus 1. And now if you can see, this looks like a diamond problem here, like a slide divide bottoms up. So if I do the 3 slide over to the 2, that is 6. So I'm looking for something that multiplies to 6 and adds to 1. That is not possible. That's either 1 times 6 or 2 times 3, and neither one of those adds to 1. So we can't actually factor that, which is good. So I'm going to delete all that. Okay, so this is as factored as it can be. So now I just want to cancel what can cancel, and I can see that my 2s should go away there. And then now I'm at the final answer. So for your final answer, you can leave the negative out front like that if you want to. Some people like to take that negative and distribute it back in, and it does not matter to me which one you do. So you can leave your answer like that, or if you want to distribute the negative so that you don't have any parentheses on the top, you can do it that way as well. It's up to you.